well, uh, class, this is the final week until our final, uh, until the final uh, paper, which is um, going to be 25 pages and not too difficult. And um, I'll explain more about that uh, uh, later in the week. But um, for now, you know, this is really it. And I kind of told you in this class, I promised that this week was a little bit more relaxed than the previous ones. So here's, um, and, and also I said I was going to, we're going to do a recap of Western civilization. Here I am with my Irish teacup, right? The West, yes. So, um, uh, basically, you know, we started off in this class and we addressed the fact that there's um, been a shift in the way that Western Civ has been taught for the most part there was that old adage you know the west is the best and um and yet it's it's not it hasn't really gone away um at least in certain circles now what i'm hoping that regardless of what you think about in terms of um moralizing um you know the civilization that you favor okay right that's a subjective thing i can't i can't tell you the West isn't the best or that it is the best. I mean, you know, um, I, I, I hoped mainly that as we, you took this class that you were able to understand what developed in various parts of what um, we, we think of as, as the West. And um, remind us that it's, it's a little more complicated than just um, even actually saying that something it's West uh, versus East. I mean, Australia, is it geographically in the West or New Zealand? Um, you know, uh, we have the white South Afrikaner culture in South Africa, and we have, um, you know, you know, that's, they instituted Western culture, um, you know, in the political system, you know, was that a part of the West? It's a part of the Western legacy, but South Africa is that Africa or the West or both, right? Um, and uh, the impacts of the West um, can be discussed in many different ways. Sometimes people don't want to put a more favorable light on it. We talk about medicine and technology. Um, you know, every every uh, country that has a university system that works similar to a junior college and a state and, and a UC in California or, or you know all these university systems. Are essentially um, very much Western styles of education, um, and, and and certainly the West in, in the modern era, um, which would be in my 105 class, ends up dominating the world. We talked a bit about um, exploration and slavery and um, what things meant for the indigenous people of. Um, south and central america um but you know we we really focused on the time period in this class of the evolution the development of the west which didn't start in the west right and then you know germanic celtic peoples we talked we didn't get to talk as much about as the hunnic and the slavic but essentially tribal societies that did not have writing that were pagan um, you, you know, clan based with a clan chief and function in many ways like Africa and the American continent, right? I, I hope that you remember that. And, you know, I was kind of trying to emphasize that um, while we might think of ourselves as so different that, you know, African culture and did, basically all, all cultures prior to civilization and in the modern world, really meaning, um, the Western Christian world based on Roman traditions and the Islamic world that gives writing and um, uh, kind of um, through missionary work and some, sometimes through political um, force, both Christianity and Islam have made their mark on the rest of the world and created this thing called Western civilization. And even we talked about Islam, it's not precise to say that, 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 that that the West and Islam don't go together. In fact, as we've mentioned, they've always um, kind of 
like to see themselves as separate, but they both influenced each other, right? And and I think most of you who paid attention to my class and looked over some of the things I've discussed see that now, okay? And, um, you know, just think in terms of even like with American culture, you know, jazz music, blues, um, much of our culture comes from the influence of the African American community that brought over some musical traditions and so forth, even such as the banjo, which we didn't get to talk about, that comes from black slaves. This is an African and Caribbean influence on us. So again, all societies as they interact, even when the, the, the interaction is in a negative context, influence each other and they create a lot of diversity. And um, I hope that you really feel enriched by what you've learned. Um, I hope that you also see that um, there's there's much more to, to understand, especially as we go into the developing into um, this next section. Some of you might be taking that with me, the 105, or you'll take it with somebody else. But that's what brings us up then and now to modern times. Um, I taught high school in the past, um, at least as a long-term sub, and I've, I've noticed that they've had wor world civilization books that really are Western civ books. And uh, many, many of uh, students take world history and they end up getting almost the same thing that I just uh, showed you. And this is unfortunate. Um, but the thing is also unfortunate is that I, I, I really wish that everyone could take U.S. history with Western Civ and World Civ or something dealing with other world cultures. Because I feel like it's through these I'm comparing and contrasting of these um, th that, that those three elements, right? Where we're at here, the history of the United States, looking at our context to where we came from, because remember, the United States um, is a European project that became independent of Europe. Keep that in mind, right? The whole system of government, everything, okay? Um, and you know, who's the first nation to acknowledge an independent United States, it was Morocco, a Muslim African country, okay? Um, there's never been a separation. And through the slave trade, African people were forced also into other parts of the world they normally wouldn't have been. And, and so we have, the, we have negative sides, we have positive sides. Ultimately, uh, we have the world the way it is now. And um, there's a lot of controversy, not only a sensitivity about this uh, legacy that the West has left because of colonialism and imperialism, which is in more discussion in um, the later periods, uh, right? But it's also that, you know, you have Western nations where many more people of color live there now, get educated and are going into academia and they're contributing their ideas to, uh, uh, to their thoughts about the West. And obviously they'd be seeing it a little bit different, you know, so as women, as gays, as people of color go into academia and they start teaching things like Western Civ, they also are going to be able to contribute some um, perspectives that weren't maybe there. They were looking for things that maybe people, some of the older white guys that used to dominate this uh, profession and this uh, field uh, uh, weren't looking at, right? Okay, so it's not like the, the, it's not becoming a politically correct history as much as it's becoming that the, the the complexities of history is being more represented as people uh, from diverse backgrounds are more and more coming into these fields, okay? Now, having said that, I'm going to have you um, watch the last, the last documentary I'm gonna have you watch is a um, BBC documentary from a man named Neil Ferguson. And he is considered basically in my field, one of the most Eurocentric um, historians and political science writers um, that I can think of that still wants to defend the legacy of the West and say that it's okay, despite colonialism and imperialism and all the bad things that the West uh, did, it still it was, it was, it's good for the world that the West dominated. Now, I don't agree with him. Now, why am I having you watch this? Well, I had one student tell me that they've had some other professors exposed them to Neil Ferguson. Um, but what I thought is this, I mean, he's a very good looking guy, he's very articulate, 
and he still has a strong appeal even though he's doesn't have an appeal among my <laughs> my many of my colleagues have a very politically different point of view than you know Ferguson um but you know what I thought I, I, I would I would like you to do then though is I'm gonna leave this documentary clip where he covers all of the topics that we just went over and he's clearly trying to send a message and um he's not he's not so much in this being as, as he, in some of his other interviews and some of his other uh documentaries he's much more overt almost like i don't want to say white supremacist but he's just very like unapologetically pro-western um in this case sometimes it's a little bit more subtle but he's trying to send a message okay and what I want you to just think about is that regardless of whether it's good or bad, the West does end up dominating much of the globe. Um, okay. And the wealth disparity ends up now, e even as we speak now, um, was in favor of, of the West. And then many people have, have asked for a long time why that is. The way the West used to explain that is they said, well, it's because we're the West and the West is the best and that's why we ended up the best some said it was our God-given destiny other people have tried to look at different other factors as to why um, one part of the globe was able to dominate so disproportionately another part of the globe and, and in fact if you look in history that's always a question right how, how you know what inspired the Mongols all of a sudden to fly out of the steps or, or, or the exact point when Muhammad, a tribal society in Arabia that's barely even paid attention to by most of the known world, just bursts out into the scene and like completely influences world history and pops, and the, the religion coming from this area pops all over the world, right? Okay, these are great questions. Now, um, so what I want to do is this though. Uh, I want you to take notes on this Neil Ferguson video, knowing that that's the bias he has. And it's fine, and you know my bias, okay? But now you've been educated in the topic and I want to just see, I want you to watch it and I want you to take your own critical lens, write notes on it and then tell me your own opinion about the bias in that documentary and whether um, you agree with him, try to tell me why or disagree. And I, either way, I want your thoughts on it. Of course, I think you know me by now. I'm not judging you or you're great. You're not going to be graded based on your opinion about the video. Um, and maybe what you will find, I want to ask you, you know, uh, he's a very compelling speaker. Like I said, you know, many people find him uh, attractive and, and uh, he's articulate. Um, he's very persuasive. Um, is that going to influence you? Or are you able to just listen to the message? Do you think you have enough knowledge right now to kind of follow him? Because he does cover pretty much what we're ta we've talked about. And do you think that, you know, you can really stand on your own with, um, is he going to reinforce what you've already thought or maybe change it a little? Like what? And I, I want to challenge you. Always expose yourself to different ideas and keep learning and keep challenging. And I think what you'll end up finding is that you will, you will take a position. You'll have uh, uh, strong opinions still. But you'll have so much more nuance and you'll be so much more capable of understanding where other people are coming from. But you will truly be what college is supposed to make you to be. Uh, uh, and I, I don't like the word, it sounds pretentious, but, but you'll be an intellectual. And um, you know, are you, you'll certainly th approach topics more intelligently. That's the approach I like to, that's how I like to say it, okay? So um, watch that. Give your opinion. All the praise or all the hate, it's fine. Just uh, pay attention, write it down. And um, I just want to say that I've really enjoyed um, you know, sharing these lectures with you and going over all the material. And then um, please, um, you know, if you have any um, final questions or thoughts, uh, I'll make sure that we're open for um, everything before the end of this class. So, oh, the last thing. My gift to you, especially if you've watched this far in the video, I'll take in any late work due by this Sunday with this assignment. Okay? But you got to do it. Okay? Get it all in by by the upcoming Sunday, next Sunday. Okay? Um, so we'll be in touch.